Hello and welcome all of you to my YouTube channel Animals and Pets with Partho. Today I am going to talk about the dog world and whether it has lost its narrative. The very purpose for which dog shows were created have we lost the direction. That is going to be my subject today. Well, let us get back to India. India was of course for many many hundred years several hundred years uh, under the british rule and wherever the british uh, rule was there because there was a saying in those times that the sun never set in british empire well things have changed now and a uh, lot of these countries have become independent which was once dependent upon the british but then they have left back a long legacy and some uh, some very uh, excellent uh, sport that the britishers part of parts down to their uh, sort of uh, places where they had actually ruled similarly now uh, some of those places the fancy of dogs let us come to dogs because that is going to be my subject and it always has been and uh, mm, uh, why was dog shows started dog shows were started to preserve the breeds and the characteristics of the breeds for which it was uh, bred specifically and uh, it had everything to do with uh, in relation to its size its uh, sort of its structure its uh, uh, maneuverability its uh, 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 movement its speed and everything everything else well with times uh, a oh, lot of these breeds developed and reached its pinnacle where you know the standards were so beautifully laid down that even today they hold good but have we deviated from the purpose of uh, for which dog shows were originally um, meant that is my topic well now see in india we were Well, uh, under British times, the British started uh, importing dogs and breeding them, and then the dogs started being shown and things like that. And uh, of course, during British rule, there were lots of imports coming in, so there was not a really great necessity to breed its own champions. But then, what happened? The British left in 1947, and after that, slowly everything shifted to uh, you know um, uh, become all Indian. and uh, at that time a lot of impositions uh, uh, law was imposed uh, against importing of animals and things like that and uh, importing of dogs wasn't easy because when the britishers left india a lot of british uh, um, uh, you know aristocracy which had to leave and they had a lot of animals here especially in the case of dogs uh they did not uh, because they knew indians would wouldn't know how to take care of them which was uh, true to the uh, most extent and uh, uh, the, uh they couldn't take care of the breeds or be able to preserve them so what they did is they had to put the animals down they had to shoot them uh, uh you know so that they have a painless uh, um, uh death and so that they don't continuously suffer and the you know dogs they once loved they wouldn't want because indians wouldn't be able to feed them or take care of them and wouldn't be able to house them so with all these things in mind they actually uh, when they left india uh, so uh, uh, after the uh, british left india it became difficult for indians to import from uh, england or other countries where the dogs were that, you know highly developed and of good quality but with time when india's independence got established and then we had the rajas and the maharajas coming in and the aristocracy and they uh, sort of uh, uh, used their contacts and slowly imports started coming in but it wasn't it wasn't so uh, you know uh, openly done or in uh, the imports were in too numerous so once they came in other people here you to you know use them for breeding they had to learn the art of breeding 
and they had to breed their own champions. And so our dog game was developing in the right lines. And we, uh, our home breeds were really progressing. And uh, more, I have seen many, many, uh, uh, many for several years that you know Indian bred dogs used to win even over imports. And th that was a challenge. And uh, in fact, I have bred dogs that have uh, put uh, imports, uh, uh, means winning imports to shame. Um, I can recall, of course, I'll tell you, one dog that I remember for a long time is uh, Champion Ridge of, in Calcutta. Because Calcutta's dog way was more developed than anywhere else in the country uh, for a long, long time. So this Champion Ridge was a dog which a uh, trader, uh, you know, who used to buy dogs from the hills of Darjeeling, um, very cheaply, a few hundred rupees, you know, and they would uh, say, here they would buy it for 30, 40, 50, 60 rupees and take them to Calcutta and they would be uh, sold to people. So this Lhasa Apsos, which uh, originally uh, the Britishers took from this uh, Darjeeling area and they uh, took to other parts of the, when they left India and later on also when foreigners came in and they uh, were gifted with Lhasa Apsos and all this migrated to all parts of the world and the Lhasas made a big name in the uh, sorry, in the galaxy of breeds that we that the world has, Lhasa made its uh, place of uh, 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 took its place of honor. But then what happened was this uh, champion rich, what I was talking about, uh, he was sold to one Mr. Uh, Devashish Pramanik uh, of Calcutta, and Mr. Pramanik is to show this dog year after year and he maintained it very well, and he kept on winning best in shows and best in shows and uh, all sorts of judges mainly in those days we had great judges coming from um, England particularly then America then uh, you know of course some you know uh, I remember recalling uh, the Marquis de Perales of Spain having judged here and there were many many other you know, you know judges uh, even uh, uh, Prince Ahmed Hussein who was uh, um, uh, was an Indian judge in the, on records, but he used to stay in England and he was authorized to award uh, challenge certificates in England for over 100 and some odd, uh, you know, number of breeds, which is a rare honor that, uh, uh, you know, judges can achieve in England. Well, and they would say that the, this Lhasa Apso could win anywhere in the world. It's one of the top class, you know, the great standard. But then these were not blandly bred. And you know, so slowly, slowly, this unplanned breeding, all these lassas in these areas got uh, lost. But then uh, Indian bred dogs were doing well, were doing wonders. But then as you know, this uh, syndicate, the man who actually came into the dog game to loot this entire Indian dog game. And he not only sort of uh, uh, made the sure that the imported dogs only started winning but by that time of course a lot of people had money so they they he utilized their money to get them imported dogs and not only that he had made an arrangement with an european company to run the dog game in india and with that the dog game what happened was you could oh you if you had to win you only had to import because they were the, uh, the handlers were also imported the dogs were imported and from and the breeders from around the from europe is to you know most of them are very corrupt some are brilliant of course but most of them are very corrupt and they come here to have a holiday and so this uh, syndicate he established an empire where he put all his stooges in several several clubs and they had to bring in judges that he only uh, recommended and that's how he was getting appointments in other countries but then his you know the uh, whatever you know this stopped because he developed such a uh, you know bad reputation all across the world because of chasing women so he started chasing women whichever country he went and even went after co-judges lady judges which actually the word spread around the world and so he's, uh, he's become uh, jobless and most uh, countries don't want him to come and judge anymore. So, which is, uh, uh, you know, anyway, but it has brought us so much of shame to the dog world of this country. And as an individual, as an Indian, I feel very, uh, uh, you know, uh, very uh, sorry that such a state of things happened and that also 
uh, in our dog game. Now what has happened is uh, the imp- uh, people believe that we have to import dogs and uh, and the main purpose the, so the breeders have all you know so the breeding all here is about pet quality the, uh, the means the, uh, the the huge um, uh, pet market in this country uh, and the breeders are breeding the dogs are undernourished and man, they are afraid on scraps and you know very poor because and then you, what you do you lose uh, their sizes their bone quality and everything is getting lost because all these degenerated the really breeding runs you know are being bred uh, because they just have to resemble a breed and and it goes it gets sold in the market through pet shops now people don't go to breeders you know uh, people go to uh, pet shops and sellers so that's how the entire market has been developed here and all people who want to go to dog shows and win they have to spend a lot of money not only they import the dogs they they spend huge amounts in importing the dog fixes you know and after that the handlers take huge money and the clubs take huge money to promote those dogs and everything is done so the pin purpose uh, where the breeders bred their top winners and other things and so that you know the gun dogs uh, you know because the gun dogs were used uh, for a purpose the um, uh, hunting dogs were used for a bred and used for a purpose so all this purpose has been lost now it is only dog show and winning at a dog show so winning at a dog show is now all about money and here in india of course in other countries like australia and new zealand i'm sure and i know and also in england and a lot of these european countries and western world <coughs> there are top class breeders even though the numbers are dwindling but there are and the, but then in these asian countries it is all about um, uh, winning dog shows with money so with this very safe very sorry state of affairs where uh, you know uh, the syndicate in, of this kind of, uh, dog world of our india has completely here you can understand that huge this huge country which was breeding their top class dogs they were top class breeders i wouldn't say i would i i was a really really top breeder but i have lot of times when my home breeds have won uh, bashing shows and they have won bred uh, defeated uh, top uh, 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 imports like in one occasion i remember i had bred a litter of dachshunds where i had five males and there was an american champion from dallas dachshund association of long island very famous uh, american champion uh, american champion legibald dachstar who marked and uh, the judge was marion spawing from uh, uk and um, in that uh, open class uh, where of course uh, uh, in the open class my first five my home breeds male stood from 1 to 5 and the sixth was the american champion uh, legibald dark star womart well uh, this was what we actually it all it doesn't happen accidentally you have to work towards it but when you or when everybody knows that if you only import dogs and spend lakhs and millions and billions of rupees then only your dog is going to win so the breeders will uh, actually stop breeding their dogs and uh, that's what i have done for the last 15 20 years i have not been breeding dogs uh, which, uh, because it's not about money if i had to make money even in today i would just breed them like uh, guinea pigs and sell them to the pet market and make money from dogs but i have stopped breeding because the whole purpose of breeding uh, champions has been lost in this country with these words uh, this is just one bit of information very important bit of information for posterity because there is a possibility to reverse the situation we have to some day stop allowing imported dogs to be shown Um, you can import dogs only breeders can import dogs and they have to breed their winners so that is the magic the magic lies there once you do that you have you will have lot of these breeders breeding top quality dogs because there is those dogs have to be show can be shown and win at dog shows thank you and see you again soon uh, with a new video uh, like i always do bye bye and i request everyone who's not subscribed to my channel but has been watching it for a long long time uh, please subscribe 
and uh, of course share it with animal loving friends. Uh, I will come back with more information soon.